Now regression is going to tell us if there's some sort of correlation between our variable x and our variable y. So x is our explanatory variable. I always say x explains y. So it's our independence variable and y is going to be our dependent variable. We've got a hat over this y indicating that it's not the true value y but only an estimate of y. So kind of our fitted value if, if you will. So from algebra you may know this expression here or this equation y equals mx plus b. This is known as slope intercept form. The m value or whatever is attached to the x is our slope and our b value is the y intercept or the point at which x equals 0 thus it crosses the axis at b. Now when we deal with regression we're going to put these in uh, reverse order. We're going to give the intercept first and then add the slope to x. Uh, this is uh, this is for simple linear regression. We've got a sub 0 and a sub 1 if we had to add if we have additional variables x when we're dealing with multiple regression we add a b2 and then an x2 and a b3 and an x3 and so forth. We're only dealing with one um, specific variable so there'll be only one b value associated with it. So beta sub 0 is the actual y-intercept and our sample statistic for that, our estimate if you will, is b sub 0. That estimates the actual y-intercept. Similarly, beta 1 is the true slope of the regression equation, whereas b1 is our estimate of that. We're going to be trying to determine whether or not there is a slope, which means whether or not beta 1 equals 0. If beta 1 equals 0, which is our null hypothesis, then we don't have a slope and there's no relationship between x and y. However, if b1 has a slope, it could be up or it could be down, positive or negative, uh, then we would go with an alternative hypothesis that the beta 1 doesn't equal 0. I usually t pick that as opposed to uh, one tailed greater than or less than because our r value will tell us the direction or for that matter the, the slope itself will tell us if it's got a plus in front of it it's positive if it's got a negative it's negative provided that the slope actually exists. This is the same data that I used for the r squared value so the try to see what the correlation is between the cost of a pizza, a slice of pizza, and a subway fare over the course of years. I still have the data entered in, but if you don't, you have to just hit the stat key and the enter button, and then enter in the data. I'm going to use list 1 and list 2. You can use any lists you want. Just make sure that you specify properly when you get to the actual test. So if you, recall, if you recall, we're going to use the LINREG t-test. That is stat and tests, and it's at the bottom, so I'm going to go up. LINREG t-test is F on this one, and I'm not sure what it is on the 83. All right, so we have list 1, list 2, and doesn't equal. Now, I have included this Y1 that wasn't, wasn't there when I did the R squared value how to get this, uh, what's, what this is going to do is it's going to put the regression equation into your Y list. It'll be your first Y list and, and how you get that up is you hit the VARS key and then you go over to the Y VARS, the Y variable. And we're going to take the function and I'm just going to take the very first function. So that's going to fill in for Y1 and once the regression equation is found it's going to plug it into there. So we just need to go down and calculate and this is going to be the same display that you saw before. Now, something that we're going to use that we didn't use before is we're going to actually fill in the regression equation. So it's in the form y equals a plus bx, or our b sub 0 is a and our b sub 1 is b, and there are a and b here. So this is equivalent to saying uh, y is 0.0346-ish, plus 0.945 times x. That would be our equation. And this is your output here. And this is the display on the TI-83 and 84, what it looks like. Uh, again, it's telling you the, the beta doesn't equal zero as our alternative hypothesis. That is the same as this test here. This is row. 
uh, that is the actual population correlation coefficient. So our R value will estimate that. So the, the, it's, the test is the same, whether or not we're testing for slope equaling zero or not equaling zero, or there being no correlation versus a correlation. But again, our, our slope will tell us, or our R value will tell us which way it goes. Here are a couple other ways to do it. Uh, the mini tab one here has, instead of a Y and an X, it's got, it's filling in for the actual values, what it relates to in context. So the subway is equal to 0.0346, which is our intercept, plus 0.945 times pizza. What this means is for every increase of one unit, in this case one dollar, for pizza, the subway is going to go up by 94.5 cents, or about 95 cents, something like that. Here in Excel, we look at the intercept and the x variable. So the x variable is simply the slope, what goes in front of it, and the coefficient for the intercept is the 0.0345, and similarly with the stat disk. But you're going to primarily be using this TI-8384. So again, this is our equation once we fill in the A and the B. And we can predict for different values of Y by just putting in dollar amounts for X. So if we wanted to predict what the value would be for a, a subway token if the slice of pizza was $1.50, I'm simply going to put in 1.5 for X. And that's basically 0.0346 plus 0.945 times our x in this case will be 1.5. So when we have a slice of pizza at $1.50, we expect that the subway token will be about $1.45, a little hair more or something like that. That's how we use the equation to, to fit values. This is a picture of the, the data points with the line through it. We can do the same thing on the TI-84 or 83. So this blue stat plot here, first of all, let me show you the Y values. So this Y1 has the regression equation to an obscene amount of decimals, but basically 0.0346 and 0.945, and then there'll be an X as we go over. But to get to the stat plots and, and actually plot the data, we hit the second key and then the Y key and we get the stat plots. We only want to turn one of them on. I've got them in the first one. So we need to turn it on and turn the rest of the plots off to make sure that you don't have any overlap or errors or something along those lines. And our very first option, this, um, this little dotted line here, stands for a scatter plot. So it's the first option. And some of them, they have the first three and the bottom, they've got the next three in the next row. You want the top left, basically. Now, in this instance, you I have the x values in list 1 and the y values in list 2. Wherever you decide to put them in, make sure that you have the proper lists there as well. Uh, the mark, All the mark is is simply how you want the points to be. So if I wanted a dot like this or this, this dot here, I would use this. And the color, it's going to give me a bl blue dots instead. So the graph button in the upper right-hand corner is going to show me the graph. It just so happens to go through this. If for some reason uh, it, it didn't zone in on your data, maybe you had run a graph with other data before, then you need to hit zoom and then number nine. So the zoom key and then the zoom stat is what you need, but you can just hit the nine and that will zoom in on it. So if you didn't have the nice, uh, the nice zoom in on it, then that's what you would do. So it's got all the different points here, and you can hit the trace and go to each individual point and, and see that and so forth. But you can see that the, the line fits the data pretty darn well. And again, our R squared value is extremely high, so that's not surprising. Now finally, we can't really extrapolate beyond our actual data. So I can't predict what a subway token is going to cost when a, a slice of pizza is fifty dollars, it, it just isn't going to work. Now, it, I, I suppose it's possible that it does, but what you need to do is you need to have data with those dollar amounts presented as well. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of different examples where you know, um, you're going to have less than zero at some point, and that certainly couldn't happen in, in many instances. So, 
you know, if we had uh, if we had wanted to even to go to like four or five dollars, we would need to wait until those prices rose to that amount. So this is a hard one to deal with. But say you're looking at uh, car sales. If you're looking at car sales um, for vehicles at twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollars, that sort of thing, and how many the car companies can expect to sell in a given month or a year or whatever. If you're trying to determine or extrapolate it for $50,000 cars, you need to get some data with $50,000 cars in it to, to get an idea. Otherwise, your slope could be much different than what it is. So just keep that in mind. Also, if, if your beta 1 was really supposed to be equal to 0, you really didn't have any meaningful slope, basically just a flat line then what you should use is uh, the point estimate, which in this case is the sample mean, which is y bar, so the sample of the y variable. That's what you should use to estimate if, if you've just got a bad model.